going to do a short study in John 3.13. And in John 3.13, Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus. And he says to Nicodemus in John 3.13, And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Now this verse had been presented uh, to me in a discussion I had with somebody that were that was trying to say that Old Testament believers did not go into heaven. They didn't go into heaven because Christ did not die on the cross as yet. Now, I knew that that wasn't correct because we read of Elijah ascending up into heaven. And we read of Moses and Elijah appearing on the Mount Transfiguration with Jesus. And Jesus said that God is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And so, uh, where were they living? Well, they were in heaven, all right? That's where they were living, because Elijah, we read in the Old Testament, had ascended up into heaven. And so, we know that uh, John 3, 13 cannot be saying that, that uh, Old Testament believers didn't go into heaven. So, what does it mean that no man hath ascended up into heaven, but he that came down from heaven? Um, I studied this verse, and I read quite a few of the commentaries, and basically the consensus is that um, Christ came down, coming down from heaven is referring to his incarnation, and that he is the Son of Man which is in heaven because he has the knowledge of heaven. He came from heaven, therefore he has the knowledge of heaven. And when I uh, looked at that interpretation, uh, I realized that uh, something didn't quite sound right. It just didn't uh, seem to work. Uh, it, it seemed too simplistic, if you will. And as I thought about it more, it, it really is a made-up interpretation. It simply comes from man's mind. It, the interpretation didn't come from the Bible. <clears throat> now, the uh, the articles and the commentaries that I did read, um, they did offer some cross-references. And uh, those cross-references are going to be very valuable in understanding this passage. And so, we're going to let the Bible interpret the Bible instead of us trying to place our own thoughts on the scriptures, we're going to let the Bible interpret itself for us. And therefore, we're going to come to a conclusion, to an interpretation. Now, we begin with uh, Psalm 68, verse 18. Jesus is uh, making reference here uh, to Psalm 68. And uh, we read in verse 18, Thou hast ascended on high... Thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for men, yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. Now, Jesus provided the gifts of salvation by dying for us. All right, he is the one who led captivity captive. All right, he took away our captivity. You see, we are captive, yes, to sin, uh, to Satan, uh, but also to the law of God. And Christ freed us from the penalty of our sins. And therefore, he gave us the gifts that accompany salvation. All right? And salvation itself, of course, is a gift. So, uh, that uh, Psalm uh, 68, verse 18, is very helpful in understanding John 3.13, but it doesn't quite tell us everything. Uh, there's still some language that needs to be cleared up. Uh, what does it mean that he ascended and descended, you see? Now, um, we read in Ephesians, Ephesians 4, let's find that, 
Ephesians 4, verses 8 through 10. Now let's read this passage and uh, see what we see here. Wherefore, he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Now, when I read verse 9, then I knew what John 3.13 was talking about. We read here that uh, that he also first, uh, that he descended first into the lower parts of the earth. When I read that, then I knew that it could not be talking about his incarnation, all right? <laughs> There's no way that's talking about his incarnation there. It's talking about his death. You see, Christ descending is Christ descending into death. And therefore, Christ ascending is his resurrection. You see? So, uh, Ephesians 4, verses 8 through 10, really uh, open our eyes uh, to uh, what uh, Jesus is saying in John three thirteen. And when Christ rose from the dead, he ascended far above all heavens, right? And in another place, we read that he sat down at the right hand of, of, of God, all right? So, uh, John 3.13, therefore, is talking about the death and resurrection of Christ. And that's what uh, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus about. Now, you see, that interpretation came from the Bible. All right? That's where the Bible is leading us. Uh, because I knew that the lower part of the earth was a synonym for hell, for death, the grave. It's a, a synonym for a state of death. And so, uh, therefore, Christ descending is his descending into death. Now, that was fairly uh, not too hard. Uh, to to understand but what do we do with the phrase the son of man which is in heaven how is he already the son of man in heaven as he was speaking presently to Nicodemus the uh, the answer to that is that Christ must have died from the foundation of the world all right um, we read, for example, in um, Revelation 13. Now, Revelation 13 is a verse that is pretty direct. In verse 8, Revelation 13, verse 8, <clears throat> excuse me. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And, of course, Christ is the Lamb. And he's the Lamb of God, and he is the one that was slain from the foundation of the world. Now, I'm going to offer a few more verses. Um, we read, for example, in, um, in John. I'll give you John 12. John 12 is kind of an interesting verse. And let's see here. Where are you? Yes, and I'm going to start at verse 27, John 12, verse uh, 27 through 28. Uh, Jesus says, Father, glorify, rather, I'm sorry, now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then there came a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Now, we understand that Christ was glorified again because he died on the cross. But the first glorification must have occurred from the foundation of the world. You see that? Because the context is clearly talking about his death here. All right, so 
this passage too is speaking of Christ that of dying from the foundation of the world. Uh, there is also uh, Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Let's see. I think it's verse 34. Yeah, Jesus says, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And how is the inheritance prepared? It was by Christ dying as the testator. And when was it prepared? From the foundation of the world. In other words, Christ died from the foundation of the world to prepare the eternal inheritance for the elect. I'll offer you one, uh, <clears throat> one other passage. I'll give you one from the Old Testament. In the book of Psalms, Psalm 75, I think it's verse 2. Um, uh, 74. It's, I'm sorry. It's Psalm 74, verse 2. Remember thy congregation, which thou hast purchased of old, the rod of thine inheritance, which thou hast redeemed, this Mount Zion wherein thou hast dwelt. And here we read that uh, the congregation has been purchased from of old. In other words, sometime in the past, before this was even written, it was purchased. You see. So uh, he, there he's talking about the redemption of, of God's people. Right. Now, therefore, when we read that uh, no man has ascended into heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven, the phrase that he is the Son of Man in heaven is relaying the truth that Christ had already risen from the dead. He had already risen from the dead from the foundation of the world. And so, <clears throat> now when we read, go back to uh, John, the beginning of the verse, where we, um, where we read that no man had ascended into heaven. All right. Let me just turn back to that. Uh, where Jesus says, and no man had ascended up to heaven. All right, that too is stating that Christ died from the foundation of the world. Why? Because no man, no man nobody had been resurrected before Christ. You see? Now, I, can, <clears throat> I have a cross-reference for that. In uh, Acts 26, verse 23, uh, there we read uh, that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. In other words, he was the first to rise from the dead. There was no one before him that was raised from the dead. And so, and it's interesting to note that uh, in the Old Testament, we read of people rising from the dead. Uh, we read of uh, Lazarus in the New Testament being raised from the dead. Even, uh, I think it was Jairus' daughter, even. All right, if I remember right. But anyway, you have references to people rising from the dead in the Old and New Testament. But you see, Christ was the first to rise from the dead. No man, had ascend, no man had ascended into heaven before Christ. In other words, no one had been risen from the dead before Christ. You see how everything starts to come together and make sense? You see how John 3.13 was not saying that Old Testament believers didn't go into heaven? See, it's not saying that. It's saying that no man was risen from the dead before Christ. And uh, we got that interpretation by reading the Bible carefully. So, uh, I hope that uh, this helps uh, in our understanding of John 3.13. And uh, thank you very much.